All right, we're going to talk about the derivative of the natural log function, or the derivative of the ln of x. And we're going to use the chain rule um, in part of that. And instead of, instead of deriving where this comes from, we did that in class. I'm just, this is going to be kind of the quick and dirty version uh, for those of you who are absent or just need to, uh, the basics of how to do this. The derivative of the ln of x is 1 over x. And in class, again, we showed where that comes from, but you're basically going to memorize this as a fact that the derivative of the ln of x is 1 over x. The derivative of the ln of u, remember we've talked about u is kind of like a dummy variable, and it holds the place of a function other than x. So it might be something like ln of the sine of x, so that sine of x is u, so u is holding that the place of any other function besides x. When we find the derivative of the ln of sine x, or the ln of u, notice that we have an inside function, which is the sine x, and we have an outside function, which is ln. So when we have an inside and an outside function, we have to apply the chain rule. So the derivative of the outside, well, since over here we saw that the derivative of ln is 1 over x, the derivative of ln of u is 1 over u. But then the chain rule comes. We have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, and I'm just going to call the derivative of u u prime, just for simplicity's sake. If we multiply that together, we get u prime over u. So the derivative of the ln of u is u prime over u. And it fits the pattern if you go back over to the, to the derivative of ln of x. The chain rule really does work here because the derivative of the ln of x is 1 over x multiplied by the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of x is just 1, and that's why you simply get 1 over x. All right, let's look at some examples of how to apply um, the derivative of the natural log function. In problem number one, we're finding the derivative of ln of 7x. So in this case, u is equal to 7x, and u prime would be equal to 7. So if the derivative of ln of u is u prime over u, we get 7 over 7x, which simplifies to be 1 over x. In the next example, we, u is equal to x to the fifth, so u prime would be equal to 5x to the fourth. And so if we find the derivative of ln of x to the fifth, we use u prime over u. u prime, again, is 5x to the fourth, and u is x to the fifth. So if you reduce that, you get 5 over x. Pretty easy stuff. Number three, we have um, the derivative. We're finding the derivative of the sum of three logs. So we're going to apply um, the derivative of the ln of u is u prime over u. So the derivative of the ln of 3t would be 3 over 3t. The derivative of ln of 4t would be 4 over 4t. And the derivative of ln of 5t would be 5 over 5t, which simplifies to be 1 over t, plus 1 over t, plus 1 over t, which is equal to 3 over t. Now, this particular problem, I could have used some algebra to rewrite the initial expression using log properties. Not that in this particular case it would make my work that much easier. The log properties you should recall from algebra and pre-cal. These are our three basic log properties. The first one says that if you take the log of any base of a product, you can break that up into uh, the sum of the log of each um, part of that expression. Uh, the same thing if you have the log base b of a quotient, it becomes log base b of x minus the log base b of y. And these are all based on properties of exponents that you've already learned in another course. 
And then the third log property has to do with a power raised to a power, which um, allows you to multiply the power by the log. So you will need to refresh these log properties. And um, if you look on my headline page, I have some links that you can use to go back and review your log properties. All right, so having said that, um, I'm going to use log property number one to re-express the given function. And I'm going to rewrite it as ln of. So if I use property number one, I'm reversing the process. I'm going to multiply um, what I'm taking the ln of back together. So 3t times 4t times 5t gives me 60t cubed. Now, obviously, it's the same function, so when I take the derivative, I should get the same answer. So the derivative of the ln of u is u prime, so that would be 180t squared over u, which is 60t cubed, which reduces to be 3 over t, which is exactly what I had before. Now, again, using the log property in this particular problem did not make my work really that much easier, faster, or more convenient. But you will see examples where using those log properties will be extremely helpful. And then your homework is going to be very helpful. Problem number four, there are sometimes students will look at this problem and think that you can use a log property here. But in reality, you cannot. Let me erase uh, some of the writing that I had on here. Some students believe that I should apply property number two. But if you look very carefully, this says the one log of a base of a quotient. Well, this over here in the example number four, this is the quotient of two logs. So no log property. I'm not going to use any algebra to rewrite that expression. When I look at it, I see a quotient. So I'm going to use the quotient rule. So the derivative is down d up. The derivative of ln of 11x is 1 over x. Because it's 11 over 11x, u prime over u, minus up d down. The derivative of ln of 3x would be 3 over 3x, which is 1 over x, over down down. Okay, let's clean that up a little bit. I'm going to move this box down here out of my way. So when I clean that up, I will get ln of 3x over x minus, since they have the same denominator, I'll just go ahead, minus ln of 11x. That's all over x. And that's still over ln of 3x quantity squared, which is the same thing as a, uh, ln of 3x uh, minus ln of 11x over x times ln of 3x quantity squared. Now, at this point, I can use a log property, <coughs> excuse me, if I want to. Some, sometimes cleaning these up and simplifying them can be maddening to figure out how far you should simplify. But if I decided to use the log property, bringing this down here, I could rewrite this as ln of 3x over 11x. Now I am using the second property over x times ln of 3x squared, and then the x's could divide out, and I would get ln of 3 elevenths over x times ln of 3x squared. I don't know that in this particular case that going that far makes it that much better. We're not really setting the, the equation equal to anything or solving anything. Right, let's look at a few more examples. In problem number five, if you take a look at it carefully, hopefully you'll notice that that's going to require the product rule. So I'm going to have the first function, sine of x, times the derivative of the second function, the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x, plus the second function, 
ln of x times the derivative of the first, and the derivative of sine x is cosine x. Uh, as far as cleaning, not a whole lot we can do. We can make it sine x over x plus uh, ln of x cosine of x. Not a whole lot going on there. Okay, so again, that is the product rule. Number six, uh, no log property here. This is just ln. Uh, I have an inside function. This is u. So if the derivative of ln of u is u prime over u, the derivative of cosine is negative sine x, and we said u is cosine x, which can easily be written. Remember, sine over cosine is tangent. So that's my derivative. And problem number seven. In problem number seven, there are two ways to handle this problem. I'm going to tell you about the long way, and then I want to convince you that knowing your algebra is a much smarter way to tackle this problem. If we were to do this problem without using log properties, then remember the derivative of the ln of u is u prime over u. However, in this case, u is x plus 3 over 2x cubed whoops, minus 1 squared. So u prime would require the chain rule, so that would be 2 of the quantity to the first power, so that would be x plus 3 over 2x cubed minus 1. Then I would have to find the derivative of the inside using the quotient rule, so that would be um, down d up minus up d down over down down. Now, all of that is u prime, and the derivative of the ln of u is u prime over u, so that would be u prime all over x plus 3 over 2x cubed minus 1. And from there, we can start simplifying. I'm not going to do all that algebra out. I just want you to take a look at that and be convinced that that's the, not the way that you want to handle this problem. Because contrast that with what I'm about to show you. Right, so you've seen that, you've got it. I'm going to get rid of it, and we're going to reset. If I were to begin by using algebra and log properties, I could rewrite this. Here's my power, so I can bring the power in front, 2. And then, since I have a quotient on the inside, a log of a quotient, I would have ln of x plus 3 minus ln of 2x cubed minus 1. 2 is on the outside as a coefficient, so I just bring it along. So it would be 2 times. Remember the derivative of the ln is u prime over u, so the derivative of x plus 3 is 1 over x plus 3 minus, uh, we have another u prime over u, the derivative of ln of u is u prime over u, so that would give me 6x squared over 2x cubed minus 1. Now, of course, we could multiply in the 2, and we could find a common denominator, but even if we did that, that would be way simpler than what we had before, so I hope that you are convinced that algebra is the way to go and that you don't want to do this out the long way. Uh, number eight, we're going to save for uh, another lesson. It's really a sneaky way to derive how to find the derivative uh, or how to find the derivative of an exponential function uh, that is a base other than e. So hopefully uh, this video is going to help you out. Take a look at it as many times as you need to.